Good morning, everyone. This is Anthony and Shipa from Euler TV. And we are here on the last day of the Euler 2023 conference with another live session on Euler recommendations. We're excited to have with us Professor uh, Bruno uh, Fautrel from Paris, uh, who will talk uh, about the new guidelines on systemic uh, juvenile idiopathic arthritis and adult onset stills disease. Uh, Professor Fotrell, thank you very much for accepting our invitation. Mm -hmm. So, what is, what is new on uh, this year's guidelines on systemic juvenile idiopathic arthritis and adult Olsen stills disease? So, actually, everything is new. Um, up to now, we were used to have recommendations by pediatrician and sometimes some consensus among the, the adult traumatologist community. But here, we wanted to reconciliate what has been said for children's still disease, which name is now uh, systemic GIA, and adult onset still disease. So now we move to say it's one single disease, we should use one single name, which is uh, still disease. And among the recommendations that we have been uh, set up, we identify that it's very important to have an early diagnosis to start the treatment very rapidly. Second, we were used to, use, to, to treat the patient with hydrosteroid for many months and we try now to introduce targeted therapy more rapidly in order to achieve remission and to reduce the burden, the human burden of hydrosteroids to the patients. Uh, last point which is quite important is to say that due to targeted therapy it had an impact on the expression of the disease. So we saw recently some complication of the disease we were not very familiar with. So we had to identify exactly what was happening in these patients and how to treat them. And so we, we, we tried then to cover the full spectrum of the disease, both for children and adults. And also to say that some of these patients are still challenging uh, to be managed. And for this patient, it's very important for physicians to connect with reference center, who is really expert of the disease. And we have in, in Europe, uh, European reference center for rare disease. And RITA is the one for auto-inflammatory disorder. So very important to say that you can't stay alone with your patient when it becomes complicated. Thank you very much. Uh, it already looks very promising and exciting to me. And um, I would like to take this opportunity to ask you about the, the, the novel impact of this year's um, uh, recommendation. So the impact will be uh, first, the name, as I, I, I said, and second, to propose a, a decision tree in, in terms of for choosing the treatment, and then to have a um, let's say, uh, some guidelines for the physician to say, okay, I will start with this drug. I have to carefully check disease activity, and then we have targets, like in all other inflammatory joint diseases, but we have also a timing. At one week, we want to achieve a certain level of, of, of disease control. At one month, we have to be more efficient. At three months, we want to achieve clinically inactive disease with low dose of steroid, at six months, we don't want any steroids at all. So it's, you know, a, a very precise track, let's say, yeah. for both patient and physician to, to with, with specific time point where we want to see the improvement and to reduce the exposure of patient to steroids. So really, this is very important. The second thing is to say that although we have very powerful treatment, we have some problem, some specific complication with this patient. So we have to be very careful, not to be too, too much confident. And we have to screen patient for macrophage activation syndrome. It continues to happen in patient uh, when the disease is on flare, but it also during treatment, after a few days, we, we still have this kind of problem. And there was also the lung disease. It's a completely new manifestation of C disease. It was not described uh, by, let's say, 30 years ago. And now we discover that we, in children, and now we discover that also in adults, and with, with very specific mechanism, not fully, com fully understood, but we have some, you know, some, some ideas and some hypotheses that we have to confirm in the coming uh, right. years. Right. Thank you so much. And Professor Fotrell, let me ask you, what is the role of precision medicine in treating 
um, systemic juvenile idiopathic arthritis and adult onset stills disease nowadays? I think it's a very good question and actually it's the graal. You know, we want to do precision medicine. Actually, um, it's a two-step thing uh, in still disease. For when patients are starting the disease, it's not precision medicine. There is a very important pathway with IL-1 and IL-18 um, high prep production, and then you can treat the patient with either steroids with IL-1 or IL-6 blockers, and it's efficient in the majority of the patient. But some of the patients will develop specific complications, macrophage activation syndrome, we, we said, lung disease, um, serious hepatitis, for example, and for this patient, now we know that we have some signals that we need to screen and to detect. Uh, everything is not clear in terms of to, to, to say it, it has to be done in, clinic, in daily clinical practice, but um, we have to work on that on the research agenda to see how, what do we need to measure in blood, IL-18, I think it's important, S100 proteins, uh, the, the, we call that alarmin, uh, protein who are here to increase inflammation. And probably there is also a role for some HLA uh, typing because some patients with specific HLA subgroups are the ones who will develop this complication. So I think this is not for the, the majority of the patient, but to detect or to screen the patient that will evolve badly or differently. This is some excellent comments. Thank you very much. Um, that's already a massive work. Um, and I want to congratulate you for the for the for the recommendation and I would like to ask you about what does it mean to our still disease patients? First, uh, it, for still disease patients but also for the rheumatology yep. community, these are a joint effort from the pediatric society, so the, the press, the Pediatric Rheumatology European Society, ANULA. So it's very important, it's to uh, really well acknowledge bodies and so the strength of the recommendation will be really higher. Second, uh, we really highlighted that it's a rare disease, but there are reference centers, and it, it doesn't mean that patient has to go to this specific center, but physician can connect the one with, with the other to, uh, to, to improve or, or to optimize the care of this patient. And third, in all the, the recommendation we did, uh, during the whole process of, of the guideline development, we had a collaboration with patient partners. So we included this notion of, of shared decision making or to, to, to really involve the patient in the, in the care and the decision of, of the, the therapeutic strategy. So I think it's important. And, and of course, it will facilitate the communication to the patient and probably in the coming months we'll develop some tools some just for everybody to be able to find the right information uh, especially for a patient starting to a disease uh, not to be completely lost right. in the internet but to find the right and right, adequate right, information right right, right. Well, how exciting. We have a novel recommendation guideline for systemic juvenile um, uh, inflammatory arthritis and adults on onset stills disease. And thank you very you much. Can, you can say now stills disease. A stills disease, yes. <laughs> we have to say a stills disease now. Um, and thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. And thank you uh, very much to the viewers. And we hope to see you very soon in the recommendation session. Um, and thank you, everyone. Again, thank, thank you. you. Thank you.